Sorcerer Shrine, Altar of the Abyss. Okay, let's see. What? Mac? Mac? Oh, demon. Um, oh, wow. Puberty's weird. Puberty. <laughs> now I understand why it's a cursed forest. Wait. But he's calling me! Mac is possessed by the forest. If you get too close, you might end up cursed also. I have to save him. No! Bad idea! Bad idea. Mac! Bad idea! I just told Let's you that! Just is anyone listening to me? <laughs> Ooh, what's this? What? Obsidian tentacles. Okay. Ah, oh, obsidian tentacles. See. Stew <laughs> Spell Flare Element Non. Okay, let's try. Good. Oh my god. Good. What? So great. Whoa. Oh, okay. Lower. So, two ninety three. Eh? Okay. Lower. Good. Obsidian sign. <laughs> what? Ow. Whoa. Ah. Energy drain. <coughs> oh my god. So ah. good. There. <laughs> Power it up. Flare. Good. All right. Now we have cooked back. Right. Perfect. Oh my. Energy drain. There. Tentacles. Gen skill. Spell. Uh, maybe.
player. Skew. Spell. White magic. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Haha. Yeah. <laughs> side. Oh my. Energy good. Flare. All right, nice. Flare. Or I use a uh, prism. Hey. Flare. to go what Mac! what You don't want to attack Mac, I think. My house. Okay. Jens spell black magic flare. Perfect. Good. What? Flare. Black magic flare. What? Barricade. Sleep. 
Okay. Okay. Shadu. Oh Killing her. Killing medicine. Spell white magic zephyr. Okay. Okay. Oh, -oh. obsidian sun. Oh my. Oh. -oh. Do we need to attack man? Hmm.
<laughs> Shadow. All right, we can attack Obsidian Miasma. Okay. Let's try Flare Bomb. Flare Bomb. Gents Black Magic. Flare. Yeah, white magic is Zephyr. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, okay. Flare. All right. <laughs> All right, victory, guys. Mac, Mac, Cook, oh, oh. you dummy. Sorry. Don't you know how sad it would have made mom if you died? Yeah, I know. Why'd you go alone? How come you didn't tell me? Because, Cook, you're always so cranky when someone wakes you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, but still. I wanted to show mom those flowers. I thought if I came here, I could meet her. I wanted to talk to her. You can't do that. Mom's dead. You won't ever see her again. Tell me, Kyle. When someone dies, what happens to their soul? Do you know? You lived a long time. Haven't you ever seen anything? No. I haven't. <laughs> When people die, they just go away. If there's any place a soul would go, it's in your memories. People you remember are with you forever. Lyrum will continue to live on in our memories. And that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Let's return these flowers to where they belong. This time, I don't know. It feels different than the spirit that attacked Mac. Yeah, well, not to me. The other one felt evil. What? This is different. It's warm, tender. It's almost tranquil. Right. Ow. You two get back. Grandma, 
I'm gonna grow strong like Kaim. It's warm. The warmth of her soul. Lyrum's brought us a miracle, Kaim. Really? Keep you in our thoughts. Preparing to change this, would you like to save your game first? Uh, yes. Saved. This too. Alright. What? Now the little brother Mac joins us too. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Please insert this too. This change complete. Continue. So we are playing on the Xbox One X, uh, so we will not uh, need to change to this too, so we will be just fine just using this one, because the whole game is a digital, digital game. You have been cursed. Mac, are you getting all strange again? You'll be okay, Mac. Calm down. Your power won't do bad things anymore. What? You know about this? It's weird. This strange power is moving inside of me. That's the magic of the Eastern Tribe. Don't worry about it. The Eastern Tribe coexists with the forest. They both respect and fear it. They revere and live so closely with the forest that they gain special powers from it. Okay. Isn't the Eastern Tribe the people who started the war 500 years ago? But why me? You were possessed by the Crimson Forest, which still holds the remnants of the Eastern Tribe's spirit. Because of that, the power of the Eastern Tribe now resides within you, Mac. Okay. Ooh, seems like a mixed blessing to me. That's not true. I'm sure it'll come in handy. You should be thankful, Mac. Good for you, Mac. I wish I could get it. You don't suppose the Crimson Forest would possess me too, would it? <laughs> okay. Anything here? Mm, nothing here. What's this? this it wasn't like this before or maybe because Meg is here me seems so there is a 
powerful spirit magic at work in this forest, it is likely that everything is coming back to life due to the spirit mage like Mag being here. How neat. Let's see if things were working then. Examine. What? Let's see. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's see. Oh, we have Cook and we have Mac. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, weapon O battle discuss. Water, water, ground. Wind, fire. Combo, power hit. Spell, spirit magic. Oh, shadow. Minda, power. Shadow. Good.
Aqua. Combo.
Nice. Oh ho ho ho! Demon Warrior's Braid? Demon Warrior's Ring? Demon Warrior? Is it yours? Uh, no, unfortunately. Demon Warrior Ring. Oh. Inflicts significant damage on enemy bits. Inflicts significant damage on mechanical enemies. Okay, let's go. What? <laughs> Kaim recalls a memory that was locked deep within his heart. Oh, you are so typical. A dream has been revealed. This happened long, long time ago on a small island, which has since perished. They had an odd custom that mourned their dead with a song with elegies. Elegy Island. The songs will play without ceasing from the last moments from that through the funeral to the burial. Elegies will be sung for many purposes to ease the grief of the family to recall the legacy of the deceased and to appease the soul of one who died under stressful circumstances to celebrate one's persons having lived to arrive the old age or to evoke anger at another's pointless death there were no fixed melodies or lyrics apparently the songs were sung without the lyrics at all No documents have survived, so all we can do is assemble oral histories, sites of archaeologists as we should view the island from the deck of the ship. The people of the island country had no writing system, which means they had no way to leave behind signs or evidence of their lives. I wish we could at least interview a few survivors, but there weren't any. Every single person was killed. The research team's archaeologist is a young woman in her 20s. Her country is the one they destroyed in the island. It happened while her ancestors, seven generations back, were still young people. I had to badmouth my own country. 
she stays uh, with a shrub. But they really didn't have to go that far. That far is no exaggeration. Her country prided itself uh, on its overwhelming military force. For it to gain mastery over the tiny island would have been as simple as twisting an infant's arm. But her country believed in oppressing its neighbors with force. The leader was thinking more of those neighbors than the island itself when it launched its all-out attack. The island was a mere object lesson. It was scorched from end to end. Every human being on the island, from newborn babies to elders on the verge of death, was killed without mercy. It is odd though, she says the young woman with a grim smile. There are hardly any records left from that time, even in our country. I suppose what they did was so terrible they didn't want their descendants to know about it. Her remark prompts some older scholars on the board to clear their throats. At the sound of which, she snaps her mouth shut. Sorry, she whispers. You're not much older than I am. You probably don't want to hear about all this old stuff anyway. I do, though. What interest can a sailor like you have in this boring academic matter? Skyamuni shakes his head in silence. Suddenly, things become very busy on deck. The boat is approaching the island and has entered a strange of intricate channels where the skills of the crew will be tested. The boat's swing calls calm. Oh, so I'm sorry, the woman says. I shouldn't be monopolizing your time. You have got work to do. Even as she apologizes, the talkative young archaeologist asks Kaim, Do you mind if I ask uh, you one last question? Please ask away, he replies, stopping in his tracks. She looks around to make sure no one is listening and whispering. I'm sure this is your first time taking a research team over, uh-huh. And your first time going to the island, uh, well, yes. So you probably don't know about some of the bad stories they tell about this place. There's some scholars who go there fall under a curse, like they get sick while doing their research on the island, or they become mentally unstable after they get home. I've heard uh, some even kill themselves. You mean a long time ago, right? Right, this is the first research trip in 50 years. Up to then, every time they sent out a team, one or two of the members would suffer the curse. This is why they put a stop to them all these years, so I'm a little scared myself. She sends a mock shudder through her body. I just thought I would ask you if you could teach me some magic spell for getting back safely. Kaim looks straight at her, not merely taking her appearance, but searching for the person deep inside. You'll be fine, he says. You think so? I'm pretty sure you'll be okay. She looks at him quest questioningly. If you hear singing, though, he says, hum along with it. What do you mean, he asks, she asks. Her expression increasingly uneasy, but Kaim says nothing more. Get over here now, Vista, the butt swing shouts at Kaim, who heads for his station. He did tell the woman one did white lie though. This is not his first time coming to the island. He has been here many times before. Uh, his first trip happened a long, long time ago. As the archaeologist said, the island's elegies have no fixed melody or lyrics. They were all snung sung extempore perennially and never repeated. A hundred deaths required a hundred elegies. Nor did mourners agree in advance on the nature of the elegy before they started singing. At first each would sing his or her own song, expressing his or her own feelings about the deceased. Eventually the jumble of songs would come together into a single melody without any one single singer taking the lead. In the culture of this island that had no writing, there was of course no musical notation. There were no instruments for uh, a accompany accompaniment either. Each mourner in grieving for the loved one would give voices to hope for a peaceful last journey and a song would emerge. 
Time's tribal press brought him here when the island was at peace, which is to say centuries ago. He happened to arrive just after the death of the village elder for the three days and nights the an elegy was sung around the clock, the island's people's song, which shook the darkness and reverberated all across clear blue daytime sky, left its mark with a certain ennobling comfort in the breast of Kaim, a man whom fate had decreed that no one would ever sing an elegy. <laughs> To think that such an island had been burned to the ground. The people fled in all directions at once and were murdered one at a time. It was an absolute bloodbath. Calm news about the atrocities that accompanied the butchery. Things that were not handed down the generation of the young archaeologists. Had it reached too, the woman's country had, could have taken control of the island in a single night. But instead, it uses its military power to chase down each of the island's inhabitants over a period of several days, as it carefully filling in the blank spaces in a coloring book. The island become enveloped in elegies. At first, while the living still outnumber the dead, voices in Elegiac songs all but shock shook the island with their warning. As days went by, however, the dead came to outnumber the living. The sobbing voice in song grew even fainter. When the battle reaches its final phase, the few remaining islanders who had been cornered in the island's northern tip fled into a large cave. They resigned themselves to death. All that was left for them to do was pray that they might be allowed to die with some degree of peace. But even this small measure of hope they were unable to wring from their attackers. The army of the archaeologist country went for maximum brutality. They entered the cave with every weapon at their command, and they then dragged out and killed one islander per day. Today it was an old man. The next day it was a young man. The day after that they tortured to death a young mother with an infant at her breast. And the following day the infant they tore from her arms but pissed to death. The elegies resounded without interruption. The singing voices that escaped from the cave invaded the ears of soldiers who were carrying on the massacre. Those soldiers with kind hearts collapsed one another after another, or they went to bed and left the front line. Some was the final weapon of the islanders who had no other means to fight. They went into singing as they struggled against starvation, thirst, and their own fears. The commanding officer of the anti-insurging force ordered his men to fill in the mouth of the cave. If they buried the people alive, the thoughts of the singing would no longer be audible. Nevertheless, faint singing continued. It went on day after day, rainy days, clear days, daytime, nighttime, it continued, but no longer without breaks, which gradually increased in length. The singing went beyond being an elegy for a single person and became a song suffused with the sorrow of the, all of the living things on the island. About the time the season ended, the last thin thread of singing died out. The army left the island. Not a single record of these military operations was left. Never again did anyone come to life on the island. The first research team in 15 years is plagued by difficulties. One scholar after another collapses. Almost every day, someone is sent out to the vessel anchored offshore, sick of the scholars moan with pain, blocking their ears. The situation is exactly what it was before the island was sealed off from research. Kaim knows exactly what is happening. The ocean breeze sweeping across the island sounds like a song. The branches swing in the forest sound like a song. The birds in the trees sound like a song. The babbling of the brook sounds like a song. The treading of the boots on powdered fallen leaves sound like a song. The crashing and this 
receding of the waves of the shore sounds like a song. The energy of the island that people sang with every last bit of their life, they could dredge up from inside themselves, now is being sung by the island itself. Please stop, I beg you, please stop. The scholars cried out in their delirium, covering their ears. I don't know what we did. It was our ancestors, not us. The scholar who mourned his her anger and sorrow in the constantly resounding elegy. What they say is true. It is not their fault. But they have been given no knowledge of what happened on the island so long ago. Sometimes not knowing can be a profound thing. They should prick up their ears and listen all the more. This is what Kaim has always done. The elegy being sung by the island is not merely hurling hatred and anger at them. The island is not trying to torture members of the younger generation like them who are without sin. Rather than blocking their ears, they should listen. If they do so, the message will reach them. For the island is telling them, you must know the truth. You must know what actually happened on the island so long ago. The investigation ends much earlier than originally planned. Most of the richest team have returned to the ship, their health broken and some of the more seriously ill members have been sent home. It is no longer possible to continue the work. The young archaeologist who spoke to Kaim on the way is the one of the few who have preserved to the end. Thanks to you, she says to Kaim. As soon as she climbed from the launch into the ship, she saw Kaim standing on the deck and hurried over to him. She looks haggard, but her fatigue is clearly less physical than mental. Still, her eyes harbor a strong, weird gleam. Did you hear the singing? He asks. I did, she says uh, with a nod, looking back at the receding island. It was so sad. Just as he had thought, she was able to open herself to the sadness. Did you sing along with it? Yes, I did that too, partly because of what you say to me. But I also found myself humming the same tune, quite naturally. Kaim nods and smiles at her. This is the first time he has encountered anyone with the heart to hear the island's energy. This time, when I get home, she says, I want to do the some more serious research on the wall. It is something I have to do. I almost feel I don't have any choice in the matter. I'm glad to hear that, he says. I might turn up some facts that my country finds inconvenient, but I feel it is absolutely necessary to learn the truth, to know what actually happened. The ship emerges into the open sea. A single white bird flies out from the island as if seeing the ship off on its journey. Tracing a great arc against the blue sky, it releases one high ringing cry. No longer an elegy, this is a song of joy and forgiveness, signaling the dawn of a new age. And, oh, finally, this is a long one. Saved. Don't let him get away. <laughs> oh, okay. Skill, power hit. Perfect. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, miss. 
City of Numara. The free ocean. All right. Yo, give it a shot. Could we score two four bits? D A A D. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, that was some superb playing. To commemorate this first performance, I would like to give you this. Dodge, okay. Buy new weapons. Buy. Circlet. Antidote brooch. <laughs> Immunity to poison. Oh, nice. Let's see if we can fuse ring. <laughs> Turtle shell ring.
Bio ring, piercing ring, okay. Third of shell ring. Welcome, we have uh, just gotten a rare, rare, rare item in. It is a mysterious relic of the year, straight from ancient times. Okay. All barricade. Mm. Nothing here. Take the children home and see if they they want to stay there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys, you have to stay back here, you know. So I brought you back. So you will have to stay home. It is dangerous out there.
Oh. Can rest here, I think. Oh, it's uh, food. Saved. So I guess we will need to head to the forest, uh, to the palace, maybe. City of Numara. I guess we need to head to the Queen's Palace. Yeah. Beloved citizens of Hora, I am told to. Son of the late King Zypha, please heed my words. At this moment, our nation is... Oh, if it isn't that little scamp from Ura. It's the council. I wonder what's going on. What would be so important that they'd have to broadcast it around the world? ...on the Wall Highlands into such a tragedy. I am overwhelmed with shame at the number of people who died in that battle. Furthermore, I must inform the people that His Excellency... The venerable chairman Roxian, who has led the council since our nation became a republic, has passed away due huh? to a sudden hmm. illness. His Excellency hmm. felt a terrible sense of responsibility. Do you understand any of this? <laughs> there were a lot of words I heard in my history class. That to save Ura, the monarchy must be restored immediately. Therefore, in accordance with His Excellency's dying wish, I hereby declare that henceforth. The Republic shall be abolished, and the Council shall be dissolved. Huh, Golden Boy is sure taking a lot of initiative there. It's Gondora's <laughs> plotting. The boss? I don't get it. They're trying to stop something, right? I, as the first in line to the throne, shall, with honor, bear the crown as 45th King of Ura. Also, oh, 45? Oh, thanks for clearing it up. I thought you were 44. <laughs> I shall appoint His Excellency Gongora, a sorcerer of vast experience, as my royal advisor and second in command. <sighs> well, it shall be a great honor to accept Your Majesty's appointment. Oh, okay. He sure knows how to ham it up. What? Did, did he just say royal advisor? He's kidding, right? It's nothing but government by regent. My beloved citizens, 
Allow me to illustrate one of the reasons that I reached this difficult decision. Huh? It's me! Look it! <laughs> must be planning to invade Durham. Is that my voice? What is this? How should I know? As you can see, it has been refitted with weapons. Do you understand what this means? Numara, like Kent before it, is bearing its aggressive fangs at our country. In this time of crisis, our country no longer has a standing army to protect us. Our army was swept up in the devastation at the Wall Highlands. It is in times like these when a king who can lead Ura to victory, like my late father, is indispensable. Jansen, what the hell is this? Explain yourself. I'm telling you, I don't know anything. You've been used. Me? By Gungora? You gotta be kidding me. I was just in it for the money. There. See? He let it slip. <laughs> yeah, okay. So now you know. But all he asked me to do is keep an eye on you guys. You gotta believe me. Then what was that black pearl all about? Well, look, that, that was, uh, well... Kaim, that, this uh, guy's bad news. Uh, you should get rid of him. We need to deal with him before we look for Sarah. Gungora might even be listening in on this conversation. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Okay, you don't know the whole story. Let me it just... It doesn't matter. Kaim? Let him hear us. Let him see us. Let him shudder as we close in on him. <laughs> you are creeping me out. Man, you know he's a handful even after getting his memories back. Where did I put that pearl? <laughs> Where did I put that pearl? Hey, I've seen those guys before. Yep. What? Hey? Uh, what's going on? Ow, that... Hey, who threw that? What the... Hey, it's you! You're the Orin Spies! Spies? Spies? We've got nothing to do with this. Here's your spy. <laughs> yeah, what? Hey, don't point your finger at me. Ura's gonna attack Numara, isn't it? It's all your fault! They definitely think we are spies now. We will be arrested if this keeps up. Maybe it is better for us to get out tomorrow for now, Kyle. Of course. Second, they obviously aren't gonna listen to us right now. How about we leave for now and came up with a plan? Okay, of course. Let's go to... See... Hairless. Okay, we will stop here. Thanks for watching. We will continue next time.